Mark McElroy from Patriot Electronic Security Systems. On this video, we're going to discuss how a security system works. In order to understand the concept behind how a security system protects life and property, you need to learn the different components that make up a security system. But before we get into that, you need to understand that there are two different types of systems on the market today. The first is the more traditional technology, where the control panel is a separate component in itself and is usually installed in a hidden or protected location in the home or business. The second type are the newer all-in-one units. These units integrate the control panel, the keypad, and maybe even the communicator in one unit. Now I'm not a fan of these all-in-one units and I will explain why in an upcoming video entitled What You Need to Know Before Buying a Security System. But now that you know there are two different types of systems out there, let's take a look at the different components of a typical security system. First, let's go back to the control panel. This is the brains of the system. It's really a small computer that monitors the various other components of the system and makes decisions on what to do and how to react when it gets a signal from one of those other components. Notice this control panel is in a metal enclosure. The enclosure offers the control panel a certain level of protection. It is usually closed and locked to protect it against attack. Also in this enclosure, you'll usually find a gel cell battery. This battery provides power to the system in the event of a power outage or if someone disrupts power to the home or business in an attempt to disable the system. Next we have the keypad. This device allows the user to communicate with the system. The user arms and disarms the system using the keypad. The user can tell the system to ignore certain zones if there's a reason to do so and can shut off the siren when the system goes into alarm, all using the keypad. But communication with the system works both ways. The system can communicate with the user utilizing the same keypad. If a certain sensor was triggered and that caused the system to go into alarm, then the control panel could send a message to the user via the keypad as to where the problem is. The message could be something as simple as a zone number or with more high-end units it could tell the user the exact room and sensor where the alarm was triggered. Next I'd like to talk about initiating devices. These are devices that electronically communicate to the control panel that an event has occurred. And based on the input of these devices, the control panel makes a decision on how to handle that event, such as sound the siren or call the central station. The first of these devices I'd like to show you is the magnetic reed switch, also known as a surface mounted door or window contact. This device monitors if a door or window has been opened. This device consists of two pieces. One piece is nothing more than a magnet in a plastic housing. The other piece is a simple electric switch made up of a ferrous metal. Now inside the plastic housing this switch is sealed in an airtight glass tube. This is to prohibit the metal from oxidizing. When the magnet is next, next to the switch like this, the magnet pulls the ferrous metal toward it. This will either open or close the switch depending on the switch's design. Now the switch section of this device is mounted by the alarm installer on a stationary part of the door or window frame, while the magnet is mounted on the moving door or window. Let's step over to another location where I have already installed one of these switches and it's mounted in place. OK, 
Okay, we are here at the location of one of our recent residential installs to demonstrate how the surface mounted door or window contact looks and operates in its installed position. Please forgive the lighting in this segment of the video as this location doesn't quite have the same amount of room to accommodate all of our equipment as we'd have back at the shop. And I'm also going to ask my cameraman to cut away and zoom in on the contact itself so I can give you a more detailed presentation of it. You see here, the contact itself is mounted in such a way that the switch portion of the device and the magnet portion of the device are located right next to each other when the door or window is in the closed position. The switch portion is mounted to the stationary door frame and the magnet is mounted to the moving door or window. When you open the door, the magnet pulls away from the switch, the switch changes its state from either open to closed or closed to open depending on the design of the switch. It is that change in state that the control panel detects as an event. It's also important to know that most door and window contacts are not nearly this large. This happens to be a wireless door uh, contact and it has a transmitter built into it, thus being larger in size. But if you have the typical wired door or window contact, it is about uh, a quarter of this size. The next device I'd like to talk about is the motion detector. Motion detectors monitor a specific area for movement. Now, motion detectors have come a long way in the past 20 years or so. In that time, the security industry has utilized several different types of motion detection technology, including photoelectric, ultrasonic, microwave, and passive infrared. For the purpose of this video, we're going to talk about passive infrared motion detectors, simply because they are by far the ones that are installed in most of today's systems. Passive infrared motion detectors detect infrared light generated by heat. All human beings, in fact all objects with a temperature above absolute zero, has an infrared signature. Now, the lens, that's this here, it focuses incoming infrared light on an element inside the motion detector. The element is connected to a processor that determines if the light is moving, and if so, how big the object creating the light is. Using this data, the processor determines if it should send a signal to the control panel to sound the alarm. Passive infrared motion detectors tend to pick up motion better when the object emitting infrared energy moves across the field of view much better than if the object was moving directly toward it or away from it. This makes placing of the motion detector very important. Next device I'd like to talk about is the glass break detector. Just as its name implies, the glass break detector detects the sound of breaking glass. If an intruder breaks a window to gain access to the home or business, he could in theory gain that access without moving a door or window, thus not tripping a window or door contact. When the glass break detector hears what it determines as glass breaking, it sends a signal to the control panel and the panel responds to that signal in the way it was programmed. Looking at this device, it looks pretty simple. It has a plastic case with a hole in it. It is through this hole that sound enters and is processed by the electronic circuitry inside. If the sound is deemed to be breaking glass, the device signals the control panel. Now the better glass break detectors do something a little more than listen for the sound of breaking glass. They listen for the sound of the thump an object would make hitting the glass to break it. In other words, 
a glass shattering sound alone would not trigger a good glass break detector. The glass shattering sound would need to be immediately preceded by a low thumping sound. And remember, if you're having glass break detectors installed in your home, a good installer will always test them before deeming the system ready for service. We do that with none other than a glass break simulator. This concludes the first part of how a security system works, part one. We decided to break this topic down into two videos to keep from overwhelming you with too much information. But don't worry, we're going to be posting the second and final part of the video at the same time we post this one. So if you think you're up to it, look for How a Security System Works, part two on our YouTube channel, and you'll get the rest of the information you're looking for. In the meantime, thank you for stopping by and viewing our video. And if you're looking for a security or closed circuit television system, we service New York's Westchester, Rockland, Putnam, Nassau, and Suffolk counties, as well as all of New York City. Our contact information is right down there at the bottom of the screen. Feel free to give us a call. Thanks for stopping by.